Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the virtual public forum and press conference of the new Southern Policy Young Professionals Lab, hosted and organized in collaboration with the Korea Foundation. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Ria, FPCI's Project and Research Assistant, and I'll be your MC for today's virtual public forum titled New Southern Policy for Peaceful, Stable, and Prosperous ASEAN. With opening remarks by Dr. Dino Patijalal, the chairman and founder of the Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia. Joining us today are His Excellency Michael Tene, Deputy Secretary General of ASEAN, Professor Choi Wong Gi, Head of Center for ASEAN India Studies at the Korean National Diplomatic Academy, and the representatives of the NSP Young Professionals, Ms. Amalia Mastur, International Trade Policy Advisor at the British Embassy, Mr. Angelo Wijaya, Consultant at the World Bank Group, and Mr. Equilibrium Tampu Bolon, Substance Support Officer at the Ministry of National Development Planning. Today's forum will be moderated by Professor Dewi Fortuna Anwar, co-founder of FPCI and research professor at Indonesian Institute of Sciences. She was also the supervising professor of the NSB Young Professionals Lab. We would also like to welcome all of our participants coming from the diplomatic community in Indonesia, government officials, civil society groups, academia, and media. Also joining us today, Her Excellency Artauli Tobing, the Indonesian representative to the Governing Council of ASEAN ITR. So without further ado, let us begin today's forum by welcoming our moderator, Professor Dewi Fortuna Anwar, to the floor. Professor Dewi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ria. It is a great pleasure and a, a true delight for me uh, and an honor for me to uh, moderate today's sessions, this uh, public forum, which uh, will officially launch uh, the joint policy recommendation drafted by the uh, first cohort of the uh, uh, new Southern policy young professionals from Indonesia. And uh, very briefly, uh, I, could, uh, uh, like, I would like to explain about uh, this project. Uh, this is an initiative uh, sponsored by the Cora Foundation, uh, Korean Foundation and, and the uh, FPGI, Foreign Co Policy Community of Indonesia, uh, which uh, try to uh, bring the few points of the younger generation, about the youth, about the future direction of uh, new Southern policies uh, to the ASEAN region, particularly uh, to Indonesia, how to make them more beneficial to both countries so that they are, uh, that, so that the recommendation that they propose uh, are truly of, uh, of great uh, interest and of immediate use uh, for the target uh, countries. And these young professionals uh, were selected based on the essays that they sent uh, to the FPCI uh, and, and to our um, pleasant surprise, a great numbers of uh, interested uh, essays, uh, interested uh, young people sent very, very good essays. So I, as one of the uh, persons involved in the selection, uh, had a hard time trying uh, to choose uh, the 10 representatives. So it's a great pleasure, finally, uh, it's, it's quite difficult, I say, to, to choose. It's a great pleasure, finally, to choose this 10 young professionals who uh, come from very diverse uh, backgrounds, educations, and, and, and professions. And they met uh, very intensively uh, on the 24th and 25th of May uh, to bring together their, their varied recommendations and, and then to hammer them uh, to become a joint policy recommendation, which of course is not an easy thing to do. Uh, and in fact, they already started from a few days earlier and they continued a few days uh, later uh, to finalize uh, the, the proposal. So this is really, uh, and, and with the support of the FPCI Secretary, I think they've done, our, they've done us proud uh, with a very handsome uh, recommendation, which we hope uh, will, will actually uh, of great use to the policymakers, both in uh, South Korea and, and the Asian countries, particularly Indonesia. So uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Uh, Dino Patijala, uh, the chair, the founder and chair uh, of the FECI, uh, to give you a, a welcoming remarks. Thank you, Dr. Dewi. And I want to say hello to uh, Deputy uh, Secretary General Michael Tene, uh, to Ambassador Artauli Tobing, 
to uh, my good friend uh, Bal Bai Sumwon from the Korean Foundation uh, in Jakarta and Professor uh, Choi Wongi and everybody who's taking part in this discussion. You know, Indonesia and, and Korea and South Korea have uh, developed a strategic partnership uh, and that is a unique and important strategic partnership because it's a uh, partnership between two middle powers uh, and two middle powers that are democracies and have much of the same uh, outlook and perspectives on regional and uh, global affairs. Uh, in, in this context, the a new Southern policy was created to achieve regional peace, stability, and prosperity, uh, and at the same time to enhance partnership with countries in the Southern Hemisphere, including ASEAN, member states, and India. Uh, however, during the implementation of the new Southern policy, uh, South Korea faced a lot of uh, oh, a few uh, criticism, uh, such as uh, lacking focus, uh, not being inclusive enough and too much uh, emphasis on prosperity and not enough on the people and uh, peace pillar, which form the basis of the new Southern policy. And in response to these criticism, the NSP Plus uh, was introduced by President Moon Jae-in in the ASEAN-Korea leaders meeting to address these criticism. Uh, so that is the effort on the Korean side and we appreciate uh, these uh, efforts to improve uh, and elevate the NSP. Now, uh, FPCI, uh, with the support of the Korea Foundation, aims to assess the implementation of the NSP in Indonesia. Uh, and uh, uh, we facilitated, uh, as Dr. Davy said, uh, 10 young professionals uh, to look into the policy to provide uh, what is the field response on the new Southern policy uh, of uh, Korea, right? Uh, and they were engaged in uh, three nights of uh, intensive uh, discussions and they produce a, uh, quite a solid uh, policy recommendations uh, in, in, in my view. And not only that, uh, they became friends, they became good friends uh, uh, during those uh, discussions uh, and they became committed uh, to uh, uh, solidify Indonesia-Korea relations uh, in the future. So today uh, we will listen uh, to their presentations, uh, uh, but uh, also uh, Deputy Secretary General Michael Tenney will give us a wider perspective on how the NSP can contribute to uh, ASEAN goals and visions. And uh, Professor uh, Cho Wongi from the Korean National Diplomatic Academy will give us his insights on the implementation of NSP in ASEAN and in Indonesia, and how much uh, NSP Plus could rejuvenate the relationship with uh, South Korea. You know, the, during the whole discussion, there were a lot of questions that asked, um, okay, there are gonna be elections in Korea next year, what happens to the NSP Plus? Will there be something new and things like that, right? Uh, of course, uh, no ambassador can answer that uh, because that's a political question. But uh, the feeling is that the spirit and substance of NSP Plus, uh, which uh, focuses on people, power, and peace, will remain. Yeah, no matter whether or not it will be called something else later, but the spirit uh, and the substance uh, will remain because that, in essence, is in the national interest of the uh, Republic of uh, Korea. So having said that, uh, I want to thank Korea Foundation uh, Bao, Bai, uh, for, uh, for your support. Uh, uh, you've been a really good friend of uh, FPCI and uh, uh, energetic uh, uh, person in, in uh, you know, drawing Indonesia and Korea closer and bringing Korean culture uh, and ideas to the Indonesian public. So thank you, Bai, for, for those uh, really noble efforts. Uh, we hope that uh, in the following years, a larger scope of NSP Young Professionals Lab can be convened in the future, either by involving a young generation from 10 ASEAN member states uh, and or Korean energetic young professionals. Thank you very much and uh, have a good discussion. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dino, uh, for that uh, succinct but quite uh, meaty uh, introduction to, to the program, both about the introduction 
about the uh, new Southern policy as well as the, the uh, creation of this joint policy recommendation. Now it's uh, my great pleasure uh, to invite uh, my old friend, His Excellency, uh, Mr. Robert Matthews Michael Tenney, who is currently uh, the Deputy Secretary General for ASEAN Political Security Community at the ASEAN Secretariat. Uh, but Michael is a career diplomat uh, from the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs of, of Indonesia. And uh, he will be asked to address some of the uh, pertinent questions about uh, new Southern policies and the relations between uh, South Korea and ASEAN countries. Uh, but Michael, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, uh, Ibu Dewi. Um, thank you, Padinov, uh, for inviting me to this uh, <clears throat> uh, distinguished uh, forum. And um, thank you for all the participants on this uh, event. <clears throat> Uh, I'm asked to uh, give some views on how the NSP uh, contribute to the work of ASEAN or the uh, ASEAN's efforts to achieve its uh, goals. Um, but before that, just a general observation about the NSP itself. Uh, in my personal view, this is a very good, uh, well-crafted uh, policy uh, papers, uh, and uh, the target is very clear for the uh, ASEAN countries and, and India. Uh, perhaps uh, if we want to talk about uh, the improvement uh, to improve the, the this uh, and uh, this good uh, very good document probably is to have a much a more um, well uh, this of course the RSP is uh, the uh, the big framework uh, but then perhaps it will be uh, also useful to see uh, which component of the NSP can be carried out at the regional level and uh, what component of the NSP can be better served uh, uh, implemented at, at uh, a bilateral level uh, and how these uh, two efforts can uh, create a synergy that can enhance the uh, overall relations between uh, Korea and uh, the and in particular uh, ASEAN uh, countries. <clears throat> now in terms of uh, the NSP uh, and its uh, regional component uh, in, uh, in which I mean uh, its uh, relations with, uh, with ASEAN, Actually, the, the three uh, pillars of the NSP uh, correspond very well with the uh, three pillars of the ASEAN community. The, uh, the, the uh, people uh, pillar of the NSP correspond very well with the ASEAN uh, socio-cultural community uh, pillar. The prosperity pillar uh, correspond with the ASEAN economic community pillar. And of course, the peace pillar uh, correspond to the ASEAN political security uh, community pillar. <clears throat> So in terms of the ideas, I think it is uh, in line with one another. Uh, and if we go uh, look into a much uh, deeper uh, uh, component uh, in terms of the peace component, for instance, uh, the NSP and the Korean government has always been um, a very strong uh, a supporter uh, uh, of uh, ASEAN centrality, support of the ASEAN-led mechanism in the regional uh, architectures, and as well as uh, supporting the ASEAN uh, outlook on Indo-Pacific, the latest uh, regional policy uh, that was issued by uh, ASEAN. There's also uh, shared uh, objectives in some of the hotspots in our, in our region, uh, such as in the Korean Peninsula and in South China Sea, in which both uh, Korea and ASEAN uh, seek for uh, 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 you know, uh, sharing this same objectives of seeing a, a peaceful settlement and everlasting peace in a denuclearized uh, southern uh, uh, the, in a denuclearized uh, Korean Peninsula, as well as uh, <clears throat> a peaceful uh, and stable uh, situation in uh, South China Sea. And there is also some other uh, concrete cooperation at the regional level uh, on the area of uh, non-traditional security, uh, in particular on the transnational crime. On, uh, if you look at the sec other pillar, uh, the prosperity pillar, again, this is a very uh, clear uh, indication on the shared objectives uh, uh, of ASEAN and uh, Korea and uh, the mutually beneficial uh, cooperation uh, in terms of uh, promoting prosperity for both uh, regions. Uh, there's a lot of statistics, uh, trade uh, between the two uh, sides is around 150, 160 billions. Uh, but of course, we don't, due to the COVID, probably there'll be um, a significant uh, impact uh, to that. But uh, I think uh, before the COVID hit our, our uh, region and the world, 
the trade has been increasing uh, quite uh, significantly. <clears throat> and uh, both are important uh, trading partners to each other. Uh, I think uh, the ROK is about uh, around, is the, uh, the fifth largest uh, trading partner for ASEAN. And likewise, I, I think ASEAN is either the second or third largest uh, trading partner of the ROK. Uh, as well as uh, ROK as an uh, important um, source of uh, foreign investment to many uh, ASEAN countries. There is also a significant cooperation in uh, science and technology, uh, in which uh, the uh, various initiatives are now being are under um, in the pipe pipeline. Uh, there is the ASEAN ROK Science and Technology uh, Cooperation Center, ASEAN Korea Industrial Innovative Center. Uh, ASEAN-Korea Standardization Joint Research uh, Center, uh, just to name a few. There's also uh, interesting studies being uh, uh, prepared on uh, ASEAN-Korea uh, startup ecosystem, which will be a very much uh, weighted uh, study uh, that will deal with the future economies. On people-to-people, uh, -people, people, for instance, again, uh, the uh, since the NSP has be, was launched, uh, we see uh, quite a significant uh, increase of uh, ex people exchanges. Uh, again, this is uh, up before the uh, COVID hit our uh, regions. But uh, the increase up to 2019 is quite significant. Uh, I think uh, increase of almost 50% uh, of uh, visitors, both sides. Um, and the, the Exchanges especially is uh, significant in terms of people-to-people -people exchange and in the educational uh, exchanges. In education, uh, Korea has uh, you know, uh, promoting the HIT program, the Higher Education for ASEAN Talents, which is a, a, a scholarship aimed for ASEAN faculty members, uh, in which uh, a significant amount of uh, money has been set aside for the period of 2020-2022 to uh, allow uh, faculty members of ASEAN to uh, take uh, uh, postgraduate studies in various uh, uh, Korean uh, higher institutions. Uh, and I think since the uh, COVID uh, uh, hit our regions, uh, this uh, initiative has also been expanded into to, for the uh, uh, exchanges on education in uh, the health uh, sector. And also a significant cooperation as well in the area of uh, environment. Uh, to support the development cooperation between ASEAN and uh, Korea, uh, as we all know, uh, the uh, ASEAN and Korea uh, has established the ASEAN uh, ROK uh, Cooperation Fund, um, which support the various uh, development cooperation projects uh, between uh, ASEAN and, and Korea. And uh, we have also a new uh, plan of actions uh, replacing the old one. It's an uh, ASEAN uh, ROK plan of action for uh, 2021 to 2025, uh, in which uh, even though it's already, uh, it's all, only about uh, six months uh, since being implemented, but uh, quite a lot of uh, activities has been uh, going on uh, to implement this, uh, this uh, plan of actions. So overall, I believe that the NSP uh, provide a very good uh, framework uh, to uh, focus uh, the area of cooperation between ASEAN and uh, Korea at the uh, regional uh, level. Um, however, we are now facing new uh, challenges, and this is also reflected in the fact that uh, Korea has now uh, launched the NSP+, Plus, uh, citing uh, certain uh, uh, challenges that are faced in the, in the region. Uh, of course, one of them are the, <coughs> the uh, COVID situations, the threat to the uh, multilateralism and uh, to the global supply chains uh, in the region, uh, great power rivalry, uh, digital transformation, uh, the fourth IR uh, economy. These are all uh, the new uh, areas that will affect uh, greatly the future of uh, our uh, community, both community. And I think this is also an area in which uh, Korea has uh, and ASEAN together uh, individually, we have been looking at it, and uh, we are now uh, looking at collaborative uh, efforts uh, to uh, address uh, many of these uh, uh, situ uh, situations. On COVID, the ASEAN is very much uh, appreciative of um, uh, very concrete uh, support by uh, Korea, in which uh, they have uh, the government have uh, of ROK has uh, donated uh, one million US dollar for the uh, COVID nineteen ASEAN Response Fund. 
Um, and also, uh, we are looking for a closer cooperation uh, based on the new uh, priority of ASEAN as uh, contained in the ASEAN Comprehensive uh, Regional uh, Recovery Framework. The ACRF uh, is a, a new, a new uh, initiative from ASEAN aimed at uh, recovering the region from the impact of the COVID-19. The ACRF or the ASEAN Comprehensive Regional Framework uh, basically consists of um, five uh, broad areas, broad st strategy. The first is to enhance the health system. Uh, the second is to strengthen human security. The third is to maximize the inter-ASEAN uh, uh, market uh, and uh, economic integration. Uh, basically, to make uh, use of the and uh, int intensify the benefit that we can gain from a closer uh, economic integration within the region. Uh, the fourth one is to accelerate uh, the digital transformation uh, in the region, as well as to <coughs> and the last one is the to create a more sustainable and resilient uh, future. And many of the points here in the ACRF uh, correspond well with the new uh, NSP Plus, uh, the seven uh, initiatives uh, that are mentioned in the uh, uh, NSP Plus. Um, and uh, again, uh, in terms of political security, we of course uh, are very well aware of the great power rivalry affecting the, the region. And uh, here, um, the ASEANs uh, have uh, come up with the, what we call the ASEAN uh, outlook on Indo-Pacific, as the uh, that uh, reflect ASEAN views on on this situation, on the dynamics that is going on in our uh, region uh, and the wider region surrounding the Southeast Asia region. And uh, Korea has been also, uh, like I said earlier, a strong supporter of the uh, ASEAN in outlook on Indo-Pacific, and this again open up another. Uh, uh, possibilities of various uh, cooperation that can be carried out uh, together. <clears throat> the <clears throat> NSP Plus is itself, like I said, is uh, an improvement uh, uh, of the uh, NSP, uh, taking into account uh, some of the new uh, challenges that have uh, emerged uh, just uh, recently. And uh, the seven initiatives that uh, have been uh, cited in the uh, NSP Plus, uh, again, I said, uh, like I said earlier, also correspond very well with many of the ASEAN objectives as contained in the ASEAN Community Vision 2025, the ASEAN uh, Comprehensive Regional, uh, ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, the Master Plan of uh, ASEAN Connectivity uh, for 2025, as well as the Initiative for ASEAN Integration uh, Work Plan, uh, the third work plan of the in, uh, Initiative for ASEAN Integration. So uh, overall, I think from in terms of uh, political, uh, uh, economic, and people-to-people uh, -people exchange and development corporations, uh, the, there is a huge uh, area of um, uh, compatibility uh, between the NSP and uh, uh, various ASEAN uh, goals. I think I will stop there, and then perhaps we can uh, enlarge the discussion later on um, in more detail during uh, Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, pa pa Michael. You have uh, outlined uh, the, uh, the various uh, programs uh, the combat, uh, underline the compatibility between the ASEAN uh, uh, pillars, uh, community pillars of uh, the political security community, economic community, and social culture community with the pre -pillar, three pillars of the New <coughs> Southern uh, policy. So in terms of um, the, uh, the policy, the priorities, there seems to be that there, there should be great room for uh, real uh, mutual benefits, uh, the, the strengthening of uh, cooperation between uh, ASEAN uh, and, and, and South Korea. So now, um, uh, I would, uh, it's my pleasure now to invite uh, the keynote speaker from uh, Korea, Professor Wong Yi Cho, uh, who is head of the Center for ASEAN India Studies at the Korean National Diplomatic Academy, uh, and uh, who is uh, an expert on you know, these issues, uh, including uh, Southern uh, uh, policy because uh, he's involved in the, uh, uh, as a member of the advisory group of the Presidential Committee on New Southern Policy in Korea. So, uh, Professor Cho, if you can give your comment about the joint policy uh, recommendation, as well as your uh, general take on New Southern Policy Plus, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me for, uh, <clears throat> to this very um, interesting uh, webinar. Um, 
uh, I guess uh, I'm gonna make a short presentation about uh, the certain policy. Um, I don't think I'm going into uh, the technical details of a uh, certain policy, but what I would like to do is to provide uh, some of uh, the philosophical background of the certain policy. Uh, what uh, does Korean government wants to do with this this uh, certain policy? Well, actually, uh, this initiative was announced uh, uh, in November uh, 2017, when President Moon uh, was visiting Jakarta. So he announced this initiative at the Business Forum in Jakarta. So it's uh, more than three years. And um, I think overall, uh, looking back on the, the, the deliverables and performance of the Nusseram Palace for the past three years, I think uh, this is the most uh, successful um, policy initiative, uh, policy program on the, uh, the Moon administration. Actually, uh, President Moon has many other policy initiatives, foreign and domestic. But uh, to my knowledge, this uh, New Southern Policy NSP is most successful, delivered most. Actually, uh, he took most credit, uh, the largest chunk of credit, political credit from this policy. Uh, so I think this is a, a very successful policy. And in that regard, I think uh, we have a very strong momentum um, uh, behind uh, this uh, initiative. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to uh, make uh, three points. First, uh, I'd like to talk about briefly about the motivations and back backgrounds of New Southern policy. Uh, second, uh, the main policy contents of New Southern Policy. Well, um, you talk about New Southern Policy Plus. Uh, I think uh, New Southern Policy Plus is not something totally different from the original version of uh, New Southern Policy, NSP for short. I think NSP Plus is a um, new implementation strategy of the original uh, NSP strategy. Uh, they rearranged the implementation programs and priorities into seven areas. So they came up with the seven uh, priority areas. So this is a new implementation strategy, uh, but the basic approach and philosophy is uh, still there. Uh, finally, I'll talk about the prospects and challenges. Uh, first, motivations uh, of a new certain policy. I think uh, the, the, the most important motivation behind New Southern policy from Korean perspective is diversification, economic and diplomatic diversification. If you look at the external economic profile as well as diplomatic profile of South Korea, uh, you put most of the eggs in just a few baskets. Uh, I mean, uh, in, in, in Korean approach, you have, uh, uh, you have given priority to, to only major, uh, the so-called big four powers, right? Uh, but uh, this has been the, the most important uh, approach of Korean government. But uh, as of now, the national interest of Korea goes beyond these four major countries. We have a huge economic as well as diplomatic stakes in other parts of the world. And ASEAN comes as the most important partner. So I think you need to diversify the, your external economic relations and ASEAN is most dynamic and fast growing economic partner to Korea. And you want to expand and strengthen ties with, with ASEAN. And also in 2016, Korean government decided to deploy the, the third missile defense system and China kind of began some sort of informal uh, economic retaliation, which provided the kind of the um, wake up call for this kind of uh, the over economic over dependence on China, which provided the background for uh, some movements toward economic diversification. And also, um, as the U.S.-China rivalry intensifies, we have a growing uh, pressure, uh, diplomatic uh, as well as strategic pressure from these um, two great power. So you want to create some sort of a breathing space, so to speak, or a 
kind of diplomatic space to, to cope with this uh, kind of pressure from great power rivalry. And uh, from Korean perspective, uh, uh, we have a very high level of strategy convergence with ASEAN countries, as well as to some extent uh, India as well. So we want to uh, kind of uh, synergize the, 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 the convergence of strategic interest with ASEAN. So for the last uh, couple of years uh, since ASEAN announced ASEAN outlook on the Pacific, Korea in every uh, official uh, diplomatic, uh, high level diplomatic meetings and summits, we strongly endorsed ASEAN outlook on the Indo Pacific and we want to create some sort of convergence uh, with our ASEAN uh, on the, uh, in their regard. I think the third uh, background of NSP is that I think this is also a um, expression of Korea's desire to play, to, to project some sort of middle power ambition. Uh, Korea uh, has grown into a uh, robust middle power in the region, and we want to take a greater uh, regional responsibility and role. And I think in that regard, uh, ASEAN is, uh, is, is a very important partner. So, and also uh, we want to enlarge some sort of international support with this for, for uh, our policy toward uh, DPRK, the Korean uh, Peninsula issue. Well, uh, the uh, second, the main policy contents of NSP. So this is what we have the three, three P's, the, the three pillars of uh, people, prosperity and um, uh, peace. Uh, first of all, uh, we emphasize the importance of people-centered approach. When we design the NSP, uh, we uh, deliberately uh, intended to design NSP based on the people-centered approach of ASEAN. So uh, we give priority to expanding mutual understanding, people-to-people -people ties and solidarity with ASEAN uh, friends. So I think this, uh, the, the basic, uh, the, the uh, people, uh, level ties and uh, understanding this should be the basis for 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 uh, doing business and uh, engaging in other areas so this is uh, the, the people to people level uh, understanding and solidarity should be uh, providing the basis for for all sorts of uh, uh, secondary cooperation so we emphasize uh, the uh, educational programs cultural exchange programs and particularly we give priority to invest in future generation of, of Korea and ASEAN. So we have lots of implementation programs in education, scholarship, and uh, um, uh, the vocational training and you name it. Uh, if you look at the, the, the informational brochure of NSP Plus, you have a host of uh, uh, programs that intends to give boost uh, to this people-to-people uh, -people ties with ASEAN partners. The second one is uh, prosperity. The second pillar is prosperity. Um, here, uh, I think developmental cooperation, development cooperation is the, the centerpiece uh, of, of uh, the, 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 p the prosperity pillar. You know, uh, Korea is uh, one of the uh, most successful country uh, emerging from the, um, the, the, the absolute poverty during 1950s and 60s. Now Korea is the, uh, one of the most developed, developing country, right? So uh, in that regard, I think uh, Korea is regarded as one of the leaders in development cooperation. And we want to take advantage of this, this uh, comparative advantage that Korea has in development Korea cooperation field. So, uh, Majority of the implementation programs under NSP is most belong to uh, development cooperation. Um, we emphasize mutually beneficial economic cooperation. You know, most of the economic uh, cooperation, I mean, trade, invest, and other, all sorts of economic activities are led by private sector. So there aren't many, um, areas that government can do, but with this development 
cooperation programs, we want to create and facilitate some sort of uh, environment uh, in which uh, the, the uh, Korean firms uh, expand investment and engage economic activity with, uh, activities with ASEAN and try to create some sort of a, a greater level of uh, mutually beneficial economic cooperation. The third pillar is, is peace. Uh, this is, uh, I think, the most um, uh, underdeveloped area. I mean, uh, um, if you look at the implementation program under this peace pillar, most of the programs are concentrated in the non-traditional security area. Um, Korean government has been uh, deliberately avoiding in engaging in traditional security areas, for example, the uh, South China Sea issues and things like that. Um, the reason is uh, uh, we try to, uh, I think uh, we need some sort of uh, uh, improvement here. And I think this is uh, uh, the, 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 <clears throat> the lack of, uh, of uh, active uh, policy programs under uh, peace pillar is one of the weakness of, of I think, uh, of NSP. And in their regard, I think as a regional strategy, NSP has some imbalance because we over, we give priority to development cooperation, but uh, political and security cooperation, uh, this is not kind of the, uh, uh, given a high priority. And uh, in their regard, I think uh, we need uh, more work uh, down the road. But anyhow, uh, I think uh, there are some, some uh, uh, sort of aspirations in Peace Pillar as well, uh, that we want to expand Korea's uh, contribution and responsibility in, in contributing to regional peace and stability and things like that. Uh, finally, I will, uh, I will um, uh, point, uh, want to point, I want to point out the, 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 some of the challenges ahead. First of all, the sustainability uh, of NSP. You know, Korean uh, government has five term presidency, single term presidents, right? So when you have a new president, new administration, they came up with a whole sort of new uh, brand new names of policy initiatives, things like that. But uh, given what uh, NSP has been uh, delivered uh, for the last uh, four years, I think uh, you have strong uh, momentum behind NSP. So I think uh, uh, NSP is going to survive the Moon administration, uh, even if uh, the brand name could be changed if you have different president. But I think that the, the substance and policy contents of the NSP uh, should be continuing. And second, as I pointed before, uh, some of the, uh, the, 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 the weakness uh, and, and areas to improve is the, the peace pillar of NSP. And I think um, Korean government needs to be more proactive in this regard. I mean, for example, uh, in uh, regional strategy forum, uh, Korean government has been relatively uh, silent on the issue of uh, freedom of navigation in South China Sea. I think you need to be more proactive and also you need to be more vocal in, 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 in promoting human rights and democ democracy and governance in, in, uh, in the region. I think in their regard, the, the recent Korean government's response to the, the crisis in Myanmar has been very important. Uh, Korean um, government has been very vocal about the uh, situation in Myanmar. And I think this is adding a new dimension of the existing NSP policy profile. And also I think um, uh, uh, you have many other uh, countries initiative toward ASEAN. I mean, uh, uh, nowadays, even European countries have their own Indo-Pacific strategy and they are approaching to Korea uh, in, in um, exploring some sort of collaboration. I think in their regard, uh, uh, you need to overcome some sort of the, the ways in which you implement NSP programs. I mean, so far, uh, the main uh, the, uh, the, the main <clears throat> Korean government has been implementing 
uh, NSP, NSP programs in mostly bilateral ways, but I think you need to increase the multilateral aspect of the NSP programs with ASEAN partners and, as well as other external partners. Uh, in this way, I think you need to uh, create more synergies and uh, uh, maximize the policy benefits of the, of the uh, NSP uh, programs um, uh, with other uh, ex uh, <clears throat> uh, extra regional uh, partners. All right, uh, I will stop here and uh, I'll, I'll be uh, happy to take questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Chu. Uh, I've, uh, I should have uh, tried to cut you, but I think what, what, you, have, uh, uh, what you said is very important, uh, particularly regarding the challenges and the weaknesses and the way to go forward for the NSP. Uh, it's heartening uh, to, uh, to hear that uh, regardless of the changing of administration, the, there is a likelihood of a, a longevity of this, uh, uh, the content at least of this uh, NSP uh, uh, project. Uh, and uh, you, you will have uh, opportunities later on uh, to comment on the presentations uh, by the young professionals. So without further ado, I would like now to call on uh, the representatives or young of the young professionals uh, who have also been selected based on the three pillars of the NSP. So uh, people, uh, prosperity uh, and peace. So now I would first would like to uh, invite uh, Equilibrium Tampubolon, who is uh, from, uh, sub who is a substance support officer from the Ministry of uh, National Development Planning, uh, Bapanas who will be uh, speaking on behalf of this group uh, on the people's pillar. So uh, uh, Eki, you have seven minutes. Thank you. Um, very much thank you to Ibu Dewi, uh, as well to Padino, uh, the rest of the ASEAN uh, FPCI Secretariat, as well as to uh, Professor Wongi, uh, Pa Michael and Ibu Arta for joining us. Uh, just like a quick, introduction to what we have done here. So the young professionals uh, have conducted two days of a, a conference. And at the end of the day, uh, we provided, uh, we formulated a joint policy recommendation. Uh, and we began that writing that policy recommendation by asking uh, if the NSP is just another outlook with mainly aspirational substance that uh, lack practical implementation. And we also asked what made it different with other outlooks uh, made by the major powers uh, outside of Asia that is currently uh, also interested very much uh, in Asia. So Pat Michael and uh, Professor Choi have provided much context to that question. But in our process, we had to analyze uh, the global context first. So in 2017, the NSP was formulated uh, at a time when various international norms and arrangements lack leadership and drive. Uh, at the same time, it was also difficult though for other countries to take the leadership of, uh, of the international order as well as the regional order due to the lack of resources, capabilities, uh, as well as trust uh, among um, you know, the asp aspirationist uh, countries to take that, uh, countries to take the leadership position. And we fast forward to 2020 and 2021. When we fast forward, we saw that the situation was made even worse uh, by the COVID pandemic, the looming climate crisis, the challenges, uh, the increasing challenges to traditional and non-traditional security, as well as other several pressing issues, uh, which we've all put in our uh, policy recommendation. We analyzed that such a lack of drive in the international order and regional order to have negatively affected the international cooperation across many cross-cutting issues, especially against the middle powers since they heavily rely on international cooperation to address uh, those issues. We were then faced with two issues. First one uh, is the need uh, for cooperation. But on the other hand, we are faced with ineffective cooperation uh, 
uh, at both levels, at, across all levels, uh, the international up down to the, the bilateral level. Now to address that situation uh, and to answer the first question, we saw on how the Republic of Korea through the NSB is hoped to drive cooperation through uh, contributing to, through practical issues. Now in our policy recommendations, we highlighted the challenges that require urgent cooperation and the practical ways to ensure those to answer those challenges and to answer our first question, of course. Now, next slide, please. Now, my part here is to answer on the people-to-people -people understanding and people-to-people -people connectivity of the NSP. The people-to-people -people understanding is a cornerstone of our relations. Uh, some progress has been made and since 2017, since NSP was formulated. For example, we are home to uh, Indonesia at a bilateral level, is home to the most K tweets outside of Korea. We tweet a lot about Korea. And uh, there's also an increasing trend of people exchange between uh, Republic of Korea and Indonesia, as well as uh, ASEAN, as Michael have said before. And I know for a fact that the latest K-themed fast food meals are sold out in an instant uh, the past few weeks. We can see that we're very keen in interacting with each other and in understanding each other. But some issues still persist, such as on how there are still misunderstandings and negative perception on Southeast Asians uh, in, in the Republic of Korea. Uh, perhaps that is due to the composition of the Southeast Asians uh, who are uh, for example, mostly migrant workers uh, and the different social relations uh, in the Republic of Korea due to such uh, composition. Furthermore, more importantly, COVID-19 virtually halts all further progress on building understanding, since building understanding relies on people-to-people -people interaction, and our primary methods of people-to-people -people interaction and so far has been uh, utterly, utterly halted by COVID-19. So there are many ways forward to achieve understanding and to build people-to-people uh, -people interaction. And we have identified some ways that require urgent actions. Uh, you, as seen in the slide, we have primarily about three to four uh, ways of cooperation. The first one being the protection of nationals in the immediate and longer term, uh, especially in the COVID-19 uh, context. We have to reduce barriers in COVID-19 vaccine access and research and provide uh, our nationals in each of the countries with uh, COVID-19 uh, medications and mitigations and prevention strategies. We also have to increase health systems cooperations to buy us more time and space in taking care of COVID patients and prepare for future pandemics. Of course, this has been uh, several uh, addressed in NSP+, but we can see that there are still problems in uh, vaccine. COVID-19 vaccine access and research uh, and barriers to research uh, in, in this uh, area. Uh, moving on to uh, the second uh, area of cooperation, we need to increase our capacity building skills and education cooperation to prepare for our future needs. Uh, to we need to analyze uh, the sectoral vocational needs of our countries uh, as well as in ASEAN member states. We need to focus. Uh, to do that, we can focus on access to tertiary education, uh, for example, uh, through TVET, uh, vocational and technical education, uh, which could then be tailored towards future sectoral needs. We've identified several uh, advantages of K ed education system that is able to help prepare students with digital literacy, as well as contribute to circular learning a learning which could help students to directly contribute to local communities. Of course, the details, uh, we'll, we'll touch upon the details uh, in later stages, uh, but uh, our policy recommendations, uh, you can see the details more in our policy recommendation. Now, ex moving on to the next point, we, uh, we recommend to expand meaningful people-to-people -people interaction. This is once again, uh, we need to find a way to increase people-to-people -people interaction beyond the pandemic. We need to look beyond the pandemic uh, and increase people-to-people -people interaction in a safe and a healthy way. Uh, but of course, to do that, people-to-people, -people, uh, P2P needs to be organic. It, uh, there are barriers 
uh, to people to people interaction due to the economic and distance uh, between our countries, about 5000 kilometers between uh, Jakarta and uh, Seoul, for example, they need facilitation by the government. Uh, as well as uh, by other actors that are capable to provide facilitation. Uh, lastly, uh, we see that tourism uh, as a very, very important aspect in people-to-people -people interaction. Of course, but Michael, again, have said that uh, we, we've had in massive increases of people-to-people -people exchange in the past three years, pre-pandemic levels. Uh, and, and tourism, of course, has cross-cutting uh, implications in economic and peace terms and security terms. Uh, but now, since the pandemic, uh, tourism sector has been totally, totally annihilated. Uh, in the future, to rebuild on the ashes of the uh, tourism sector, we need to focus on the uh, safety, uh, on the cleanliness, health, safety, and environmental uh, sustainability of those sectors. And Korea, Republic of Korea, could help on uh, with in developing those areas. So to wrap up, um, we think that of course uh, the Republic of Korea through the NSP should be able to provide more practical uh, areas areas of cooperation at a time where international co cooperation could not provide uh, such uh, items. At a time when uh, leaders of international orders, of uh, leaders of international arrangements, international norms are uh, busy with their own uh, strat strategic rivalry, the Republic of Korea through the NSP could drive middle powers to cooperate together and provide each other with tangible, practical cooperation. I think I would stop there and I would give uh, my time uh, back uh, to Ibu Dewi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Eki, for your excellent uh, uh, presentation, also the introduction of the of a re report. And uh, I'm uh, pleased to uh, note that Eki uh, did a stellar job in pulling all of the very Excellent reports, but very difficult. Actually, quite it was quite a challenge to make it into a, a truly joint policy recommendation, and, and this is a very important exercise. So, so thank you and congratulations uh, for, for a good report. Uh, the second presentation would be uh, from a representative from the uh, Prosperity Pillar, uh, Ms. Uh, Amelia Mastur, uh, who is currently working at the British Embassy as uh, an international trade advisor. So, Amelia, the screen is yours. Thank you, Prof. Dewi, uh, and thank you, Eki. Um, good afternoon, Your Excellency, Pak Michael Tene and Prof. Wong uh, Good afternoon, Padino and other PCI colleagues. Uh, it's an honor for me to be in here, uh, but just let me introduce myself again quickly. Uh, my name is Amalia, and I am a Trade Policy Advisor at the British Embassy Jakarta, and I am here to deliver the policy recommendations from the Prosperity Pillar. Uh, but first of all, let me give credit to my awesome team. So the Prosperity Pillar consists of four people, and I have three other amazing women behind the scene who have been who have worked really hard to finalize this recommendation. We have Betty from Microsoft Consulting, uh, Ma Pamela, who is a climate change expert from the Institute for Essential Services Forum, and we also have Jessica Wijaya, who is the head of W20. So yeah, let's get to the point of the prosperity pillar uh, recommendations. Um, just to, to give the context about the background, like but like Eki and Pat Michael has have just explained that we are now facing global uncertainty and unfortunately it is getting even more uncertain because of this pandemic, of this COVID-19 pandemic. And when we are talking about prosperity, we can't help but we talk about economy. And uh, I'm sure you, everyone will agree with us that the economic situation it's not at its best at the moment and therefore we see the need for a collective effort from everyone including new southern policy to build back our world to build back our nation our situations not only to build back from you know like how it used to be but how we can build back but so much better from how it is today 
how it used to be. So uh, you can see the hashtag on the screen, Build Back Better. And I think if you are a fan of international politics, you might have seen this hashtag was trending at least, I think, two or three days ago after the G7 meetings. But in fact, uh, it's it's not it's not like we steal the idea from these great leaders because we have finished our policy recommendation about a month ago. But it's really motivating to see that the world leaders are in agreement with us. So that's why we think that uh, the new sovereign policy needs to also adopt this build back better at the heart of its uh, policy direction. Um, could you please go to the next slide? Thank you. So here is our policy recommendation on how the new sovereign policy can build back better, uh, not only for the benefit of South Korea, but also its partner countries like Indonesia. We have two policy recommendations from the prosperity pillar here, and these two recommendations are based on two most pressing issues that we need to address together at this very moment. The first one is the industrial 4.0, and the second one is climate change. And I think, I believe everyone have heard these two uh, problems repeated everywhere in government speeches in any kind of like seminar, but if I can re-highlight why we need to care about these issues, the first one is because the digital disruption is moving much, much, much faster that we can that we can imagine. And I think there is this data, if I'm not mistaken, that I found from AT Kearney. Uh, they say that between the year of 1900 to 2000, human only experienced about 15 disruption in 100 years. But because of this technological uh, development since 2000 uh, until 2015, we have experienced at least five digital disruptions. It means once every three years. And climate change, uh, the scientists have repeatedly warned us that the impact of this climate change is possibly going to be much worse than the pandemic that we are experiencing now. So it's certainly that we, something that we need to work on together through this new sort of policy. Well, it is appreciated. Uh, we 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 appreciate the NSP plus uh, have highlighted some of these digital transformation issues and a very small part on the sustainable development. But the implementation strategy uh, of this new sovereign policy needs to be more focused towards towards the sustainable economic recovery effort. So, with that in mind, we came up with this two policy points. The first one is the new sovereign policy should promote economic cooperation in trade and investment for sustainable economic recovery. So let's direct trade investment uh, by using the benefit of Indonesia Korea SIPA by focusing on digital and sustainable development like clean technology, clean energy, sustainable uh, agriculture, and other kind of like great investment or green trade. But at the same time, we need to also remember that there is knowledge and capacity gap between, let's say, South Korea and Asia, particularly Indonesia. So it comes to the second recommendation. That's why the new sovereign policy need to also make sure that uh, we can create enabling conditions to drive our focus towards the sectors that I have just mentioned. And what is this enabling condition? Uh, it can be appropriate governance, it can be appropriate infrastructure, appropriate business environment, appropriate skill, appropriate technology, and other kind of like maybe capacity building or technology transfer that is proposed towards sustainable economic uh, recovery. So uh, the job is not only within South Korean government, but Indonesian government, so let's together, Indonesia and South Korea maximize the NSP initiatives to create this enabling condition. And uh, there is, lastly, there is this one quote that, that, that I would like to share with you all during the session that I had uh, with the FTCI and other Korean governments. If you want to go fast, you go alone, but if you want to go far, we need to go together. Um, I'll stop there and I will be very more than happy to discuss uh, details in the question and answer session. Well, uh, I'll give the screen back to you. Yeah, okay. thank you very much, uh, Amelia. That's an excellent uh, presentation. And I think that, that last quote, if you want to go fast, you can go alone, but if you want to go far, you need to go uh, to work with other people together. Uh, last but not least, uh, the representative from the uh, Peace Pillar, 
uh, is Mr. Angelo Abilwijaya, who is currently working as a consultant at the World Bank. Uh, Angelo, the screen is yours. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Dewi. Um, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now I'm going to present our policy recommendations on the peace domain. Uh, but before I begin my part of the presentation, I'd like to start with a very important note for our media and journalist colleagues that I'm speaking in strictly personal capacity and that I'm not representing any affiliations that I might be uh, affiliated with, except for the NSP I'm professional. Um, anyways, um, our recommendations on the peace domain fall under five umbrellas. Um, first, the defense industry and the defense technology cooperation. Um, bilateral cooperation between ROK and Indonesia on defense should be sustained. And uh, the Defense Industry Cooperation Committee, or the ICC, is a platform where such cooperation should continue uh, to take place. The second umbrella that I'm talking about is on uh, cooperation among maritime law enforcement agency. Um, for the Indonesian side, we have Bakamla as the maritime law enforcement agency. And uh, in, in South Korea, uh, they have the Korea Coast Guard um, as the maritime law enforcement agency. Uh, cooperation between uh, two institutions can take place in the form of capacity building and information sharing. So both um, the Indonesian and Korean side of the maritime law agencies can share information on uh, issues that are very important in their operations. Both institutions can cooperate in combating traditional and non-traditional security issues like IUU fishing, um, cross-border smuggling, and marine pollution. The third one is on pandemic uh, is, is on post-pandemic security dialogue. Um, Indonesia and ROK should continue their defense engagement on bilateral level. And on top of that, um, at the regional level, dialogue on ASEAN Defense Ministers Meeting Plus or the ADMM Plus should continue. ROK should continue to uphold its support for the ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific or uh, what we know as AOIP. Uh, on top of that, at the track two level, ROK should continue to engage Southeast Asian countries via the Council for Security and Cooperation in the Asia Pacific, or what we know as CSCAP. Uh, Post-pandemic security dialogue should also put an emphasis on the increasingly dire non-traditional security challenges for both South Korea and ASEAN, including but not limited to natural and non-natural disasters. Hence, cooperation through the ASEAN Coordinating Center for Humanitarian Assistance on Disaster Management or AHA Center is very important. Under the NSP, AHA Center has received significant contribution from the, ROK, the ASEAN ROK Fund, and this engagement should continue. Next slide. Um, our fourth recommendation uh, from the Peace Pillar is on peace building uh, on the grassroots level. In this regard, ROK should bolster its support for ASEAN Institute for Peace and Reconciliation, or AIPR, to promote peace building efforts and preventing violent extremism, especially in the grassroots level, in the, uh, the societal level. ROK should, uh, ROK through the ASEAN uh, ROK Joint Cooperation Council, or ASEAN ROK JCC, should support local level initiatives, especially to promote the role of women as peace builders as agents of de-radicalization and as agent of uh, conflict prevention. This can be done by channeling uh, experts and financial resources allocated under NSP to give financial and technical um, assistance to the aforementioned efforts. The fifth one, uh, as two vibrant Asian democracies, Indonesia and ROK should continue cooper uh, their cooperation in promoting democratic values and the rule of law. Uh, with the rise of the fourth industrial revolution, tech giants continue to devise machine learning and artificial intelligence in all spheres possible. Uh, in the cases of Donald Trump's victory in the United States um, and uh, Brexit in the United Kingdom, these technologies have been heavily devised and utilized uh, in Facebook and in other social media channels. And in both cases as well, we have seen uh, that democracies face their biggest challenges uh, thus far. So, uh, that said, ROK in Indonesia could cooperate in promoting democratic values uh, and, and carefully examining the role and advantages of these technologies and how uh, these technologies can bring benefit to the people. Uh, at the same time, also assessing how these technologies could impact uh, democracy in the long run. 
both countries could also work on promoting corruption and eradication. So as we know, um, uh, in Indonesia, we have the you know, we, we, we have the institution to uh, fight corruption, which is KPK, and in South Korea as well, we know that they have efforts uh, to curb corruption. So both countries can actually work together in promoting this. Um, next, uh, I'm going to talk about resource implication and stakeholder engagement. Um, first, uh, ROK should explore bilateral financing channels with Indonesia to deepen its cooperation in bilateral setting uh, following the ASEAN ROK Cooperation Fund in the regional setting. Um, second, ROK should uphold its commitment to double its uh, ODA grants or the uh, Official Development Assistance to partner countries, uh, especially in ASEAN, by 2022. In light of the COVID pandemic, ROK should advocate for a debt service suspension initiative or DSSI for partner countries with the high risk of defaulting. Third, um, ROK should continue engaging with Southeast Asian multilateral fora while seeking new venues for cooperation. To conclude, um, last slide. Through NSP, ROK could play as an alternative to superpower rivalry, especially with its role as a middle power. If lucky, ROK could also even be considered as a reliable partner by its partner countries, especially in ASEAN, amidst the uncertainties brought by this um, great power rivalries. In order to, uh, to ensure that NSP is successful, um, ROK should leverage on its comparative advantages, including technology, advancement in health, uh, etc., and use those advantages to support and help its partner uh, countries in ASEAN. Um, I'll stop there. And thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Professor Dewey. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent, uh, Angelo, uh, that you have presented the, the, pro the proposals on the uh, peace pillar, but also the what is more important, the money implications and stakeholders uh, engagement. Uh, before uh, I open the floor uh, to questions from the wider public, I would like to give opportunity to both Pat Michael and Professor uh, Cho to give a very brief comment, yes, not more than five minutes each, uh, to the, uh, this joint policy recommendation uh, that has been uh, drafted by uh, this very bright uh, young professionals. So maybe I uh, reverse, reverse the order. Uh, Professor Cho, would you like uh, to say a few, few words? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I was very uh, impressed by the um, relevance and um, comprehensiveness of the policy recommendations uh, in, in the written uh, package. I think um, uh, they, they provide a very comprehensive uh, uh, policy recommendations and also a lot of uh, practical uh, uh, recommendations. I think uh, my colleagues in the, the Presidential Commission Committee on New Southern Policy should read uh, your uh, policy recommendation report. Um, uh, my, my overall uh, impression is that um, the, the, the um, many policy recommendations forwarded by the professionals are very much compatible with, uh, with what actually Korean government is uh, intends to do right now. Uh, if you look at the um, NSP plus informational brochure, you have uh, many similar uh, programs. Uh, but I, I, I give um, the, 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 I appreciate uh, especially that uh, uh, the, the professionals, young professionals point out uh, some of the most important um, aspects of the New Southern policy. Um, well, uh, I, I can't go over all of the details, but I'd like to focus on two things. Uh, the first one is uh, regarding the prosperity pillar. Uh, I concur with many of the uh, policy recommendations put, forth, put forward uh, by, by uh, the authors. Uh, especially, I think um, the, uh, the 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 um, the need to uh, do some sort of uh, economic um, engagement cooperation that would uh, enable uh, the economic recovery out of the um, depression uh, by pandemic. I think in in this regard, I think the role of the, the role of government is 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 very important. But also, I think the 
go the role of private business is really important. Uh, you need to uh, create some sort of uh, facilitative uh, uh, climate, facilitative environment that um, that uh, induce more uh, private uh, business activities that would eventually contribute to economic recovery of the uh, uh, ROK as well as ASEAN. So in that regard, I think it is very important to create some sort of uh, 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 good, uh, more favorable investment climate and, and improve the environment in, in the government. I think this uh, is just some sort of policy effort. Um, another thing that I want to point out is that the climate cooperation. Um, I think the, uh, the policy recommendation uh, report correctly points out that there are no separate independent cooperation agenda in NSP initiative regarding cooperation, the climate cooperation. Um, you know, the uh, climate uh, change and the, the related um, uh, tasks uh, in the area of mitigation, mitigation of uh, uh, greenhouse gases, and also the adaptation and uh, uh, climate finance and capacity building. I think you have huge, huge demand in this area. And the Korean government hasn't been uh, focusing uh, on, on, on this area. I think uh, to my knowledge, they, uh, a couple of years ago, they have created climate, what is called climate dialogue between ROK and ASEAN, and that's it. I think you need to come up with more substantive uh, cooperation programs in this regard. I mean, there are huge demand and potential. Uh, I think uh, the Korean approach and ASEAN approach I mean, the, the uh, Southeast Asian approach regarding climate change are a little bit different. If you look at, if you go to the UN, climate change negotiation, uh, ASEAN countries and ROK belongs to different negotiating block. Uh, Korea belongs to what is called environmental integrity group. And uh, most of the ASEAN countries belong to G77 and China group, which is a developing country negotiating block. So they have a little bit different uh, approach. So I think this is global level negotiation, but at at the, at the level of uh, regional cooperation, I think there are much uh, rooms uh, to, to work on together in this area. So I think it is very important to make progress in this climate uh, uh, change, uh, climate cooperation front. Uh, I'll stop here, thank you. Thank you, Professor Chiu. But Michael, do you have uh, some, some short comments to make? Uh, is uh, Mr. Michael Cheney still around? Now, if if uh, yeah, but Michael, do you want to make a short short comments on on the report? Uh, I think I think there's some some audio problem. Can can you hear me? But Michael, can, can you hear me? So, so uh, can, uh, I, I would like to ask uh, Ria, uh, am, am I audible? Because I don't, uh, but Michael doesn't seem to hear me. Yes, you're audible, Professor. Yeah, okay. So maybe, but Michael cannot hear me. So uh, uh, maybe, maybe you can alert him, but if, uh, while waiting for him, we have um, a number of questions uh, that have come out from. But Michael, are you are you are you able to join us? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll ask. There's there's some 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 questions for for those in the media who would like to uh, ask questions directly. Please feel to do so. Raise your hands, and then I will call on you. Um, uh, we have a question from Ibu. Uh, from Ibu Rusma, from Riot Merdeka, who unfortunately uh, is not able uh, to uh, switch on a video. So uh, the question is, we can go be addressed to uh, uh, Professor Cho or uh, Michael or, or to Angelo. This is about 
the democracy and human rights issues, uh, about the kind of cooperation, uh, are there specific recommendations that touches on uh, uh, Myanmar, the current crisis in uh, uh, Myanmar? Maybe to Angelo first, is there anything in, in the policy recommendation? Okay, so I'm supposed to <clears throat> make some oh, okay. comments on the recommendation, sorry about it. Okay, so, so, uh, so okay. Um, well, uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. I think it's a very good uh, uh, presentation and a very solid uh, recommendations. Um, just uh, some uh, comments, uh, not uh, particularly on the uh, this recommendation, but you know, trying to perhaps uh, add some uh, points uh, that may also be uh, considered by the, the participants. Um, on people to people, yes, I think we have seen a lot of uh, uh, progress. Uh, unfortunately, because of the COVID, uh, many of the progress has been halted. Uh, but um, you know, although physical travel will be quite difficult uh, uh, for the next uh, few years, um, but uh, the, the exchanges uh, of ideas, exchanges between uh, people to people, uh, uh, does not necessarily have to be done uh, in a physical way. Uh, we have uh, seen the quote unquote uh, invasion of Korean cultures, uh, arts, uh, uh, movies. Uh, uh, and uh, and so on and so forth uh, to in many of uh, ASEAN countries and especially uh, in Indonesia, uh, where uh, young generation are very much uh, exposed to the various uh, aspect of the uh, Korean culture, as has been also highlighted by the uh, presenter. <clears throat> uh, I think, like likewise, uh, there is also I think a need uh, for a conscious effort uh, by by ASEAN and Korea to uh, go the other way around to provide uh, more um, exposure about ASEAN's uh, culture uh, to the Korean public uh, using the various uh, di uh, digital uh, platform. Um, I know that uh, the uh, ASEAN ROK uh, Cooperation Fund uh, is supporting a program run, and, among others, by the ASEAN Foundation, which is called the Connect ASEAN which is a program to uh, celebrate and to uh, promote uh, uh, culture and art uh, works uh, among uh, the uh, people uh, uh, or artists in ASEAN. I think many of the uh, discourse, uh, cultural discourse, as well as artistic uh, works uh, promoted by the uh, Connect ASEAN uh, can also be uh, highlighted uh, and be made known through various uh, social media platform uh, or other digital platform to the uh, Korean uh, audience. But I think this is something that uh, to uh, push start, uh, to kick start this, uh, there is a need to have a, a conscious efforts to push this uh, uh, these efforts to go the the other way around. Uh, you know, I think the uh, introductions of uh, Korean uh, culture doesn't need any more, uh, it, it goes automatically at the moment already. Uh, it has a wide audience, but I think for the, to introduce ASEAN culture to uh, Korean audience, perhaps we need a more uh, conscious uh, efforts on this uh, uh, idea, on this uh, uh, area. But, and again, but the main point here is that uh, just because the physical um, uh, traveling may have, may be, uh, uh, halted and in the near future, probably in the next few years, will also be a lot of uh, 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 difficulties. Uh, but uh, we can use uh, many uh, other uh, platform uh, to continue to promote uh, people to people exchange of ideas, uh, of uh, artistic artistic work, of knowledge uh, through the various uh, uh, digital uh, platform. On the uh, prosperity part, I think, of course, the uh, relations of uh, on economic trade investment uh, of, of Korea and uh, many ASEAN, ASEAN countries is quite deep. And <clears throat> but uh, one of the uh, foundation of that uh, relationship, I, I believe, is the role of uh, Korean companies and ASEAN companies in the global uh, supply chain, the global value chain and supply chain. Now, we know that uh, due to the geopolitical uh, development, uh, due to the uh, digital transformation, the fourth uh, industrial rev uh, revolutions, 
um, this uh, the role of uh, you know uh, countries within the global supply chains within the global value chains may be disrupted, may be uh, you know uh, changed, and how will this uh, affect the uh, economic trade investment uh, relations between uh, Korea and ASEAN countries? I think this is also something that uh, we need to look in the into the future uh, to make sure that. Uh, all these disruptions due to geopolitical uh, development, due to the, the digital transformations, uh, will uh, not have uh, uh, negative Im Im implications. Uh, and at the same time, also, uh, if there is, uh, and I'm sure there are many uh, new opportunities that arise from these uh, changes, this is something that uh, ASEAN and Korea can uh, seize and uh, use as a, uh, for further, uh, as a factor to further strengthen the economic trade and investment relations between uh, the two parties. On uh, peace uh, area, uh, I think uh, I just want to reinforce uh, the notion that have been, uh, although not directly, but uh, I have been uh, implied in the presentation, uh, uh, that uh, probably uh, it will be good for uh, ASEAN and ROK to uh, work together and to further elaborate and articulate uh, how uh, the two parties can uh, work closely uh, in terms of um, uh, promoting peace in the region by uh, using the various uh, ASEAN-led mechanism uh, in the region, the regional architecture that has been developed by ASEAN and has been always uh, constantly being supported uh, by, by Korea. Uh, there are the East Asia Summit, uh, for instance, the ASEAN Regional Forum, the ADMM uh, and the ADMM Plus that have been mentioned, and other uh, uh, regional mechanism that has been developed by ASEAN, uh, ASEAN -led, what we call ASEAN-led mechanism, in which uh, perhaps uh, ASEAN and Korea would like to uh, further discuss uh, uh, how to better utilize, how to make, uh, make sure that all these um, institutions, uh, regional framework uh, can, bet, can uh, uh, serve the interest of uh, uh, our region, uh, the interests of ASEAN and Korea, as well as uh, the interests of the parties in the wider region. So that will be my uh, <laughs> comment on the presentation. But overall, it's a very uh, excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, so we, we hope that this, uh, the joint policy recommendation from this first cohort uh, will really make it into, into, into the desk of uh, policymakers and, uh, and will really contribute to the improvement uh, of uh, New Southern policy and the, the, the policy of the recipient countries. Uh, uh, to save time, I would just like to read out uh, uh, the, the questions that have uh, come both from the, the media who, who, is, who are present, media representatives who are present here, uh, as well as from the public via YouTube. Uh, from the media here is from uh, um, the uh, Rusma from Right Merdeka, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, focuses particularly on, on Myanmar whether, whether uh, the policy recommendation or, and the, the prospect also, you know, whether uh, South Korea and ASEAN countries uh, at the multilateral, multilateral level uh, can collaborate on uh, overcoming this current crisis on Myanmar. So hold that. So maybe uh, uh, Professor Cho and Pat Michael and Angelo uh, could, uh, could answer that. Uh, but uh, there are also questions um, from a lot of question from the peace pillar actually, uh, which is uh, as as Professor Ch uh, mentioned, is one of the weakness. What one of the weaknesses of the NSP, uh, but the uh, the uh, joint policy recommendation actually made some point of it. This is a question uh, from the uh, from YouTube channel from Mr. Ario Walian Gut uh, Gutoyo, who is from the Ministry of Defense of Indonesia. Not surprisingly, uh, his question focuses more on the bilateral defense cooperation. Uh, between uh, Indonesia as well as uh, 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 you know between ASEAN and South Korea, uh, does the southern new southern policy actually address you know that that kind of uh, bilateral cooperation, uh, defense cooperation? I think this was also discussed. What is what does south, new southern policy covers all this kind of uh, existing bilateral cooperation, including defense cooperation, uh, or not? And from Mr. Uh, Mahatma Yudhistra from Universitas uh, Pajajaran. Uh, maybe this could be answered also by um, Amalia and, and uh, uh, Professor Cho. Uh, how do you compare, you know, uh, the uh, 
NSP with China led RSC, uh, you know, RCEP and uh, BRI. What are the key differences between the NSP and you know and RSEP and uh, BRI? Uh, so uh, anyone can take this. Uh, and uh, finally, the third question is um, also on the on on more on the peace issues. Uh, to what extent you know that Korea is really interested in uh, playing a role in the uh, in areas such as the South China Sea? Because at the moment, you know, South Korea tends to try to keep, you know, uh, a rather low profile here, as uh, Professor Cho uh, mentioned. Uh, what is the position of the uh, young uh, young professionals, uh, you know, in terms of their policy recommendation and also your comment? So, uh, who would like to take the first question on Myanmar? Whether there's something that South Korea and ASEAN can do to can do together? Professor, maybe Professor Cho. You'll be in the best position. Thank, thank you. Uh, well, actually, I'm not uh, prepared to give a relevant answer, but I think um, uh, since the outbreak of the crisis in Myanmar, what Korean government has been showing is very uh, unprecedented. I mean, Korea has never made a explicit uh, kind of a, a diplomatic um, statement about some uh, domestic situations in other countries. Uh, so I think this is very new dimension uh, of a value diplomacy, value diplomacy component of New Southern policy. Uh, Korea government for the first time uh, uh, stopped, canceled its uh, development cooperation projects in Myanmar. And uh, according to the Korean government, they are considering uh, further further actions depending on the development of the situation. So, in their regard, I think um, this is uh, this is making a huge difference. So, I think Korea is basically uh, supporting the the five point consensus made by the ASEAN, and um, I think in in uh, ASEAN plus three and other uh, multilateral four, I think Korea will be. Uh, compared to what Korea has been showing in the past, be more uh, proactive and vocal in, in supporting the um, uh, democracy in, in, in uh, Myanmar. Well, uh, regarding the uh, defense cooperation on the peace pillar, I think uh, Korean approach, uh, Korea has been a very important player in defense industry cooperation with uh, ASEAN countries, particularly with Indonesia. I think Korea has been very important partner uh, with uh, India in, in, in several uh, defense industry cooperation projects. And uh, we hope to continue and expand and uh, the, the mutually beneficial cooperation with this. But I think uh, in my view, I think uh, Korean government does not uh, regard defense cooperation as part of the peace pillar approach. I think Korean approach more of the uh, more of benign economic approach. <laughs> so, well, uh, I think Korea should give more strategic uh, consideration, give more uh, strategic element in uh, defense and cooperation. But so far, uh, it has been very based on the economic uh, consideration. So, I think you need to kind of give more comprehensive. Uh, consideration of the defense industry cooperation. Well, um, the third question, difference between NSP, RCEP, and BRI, well, I don't know about that, but at least the NSP does not have some sort of hidden agenda. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, NSP is not based on the commercial uh, uh, kind of orientation, but uh, NSP intends to maximize the mutually beneficial economic cooperation uh, as far as the economic area is concerned. So um, we don't pursue some sort of commercial interest. I mean, we have learned lessons from the, the Japanese approach in the past regarding Southeast Asia. And also during 1970s and 80s, many Korean firms had some problems, right? So that's why we put the uh, mutually beneficial cooperation as one of the most important priority in the development cooperation and economic area. So I think Korea is a um, uh, robust uh, middle, middle power partner in the region intends to provide a, some sort of uh, mutually beneficial uh, kind of uh, economic engagement. 
Well, uh, the last question about South China Sea, I think um, about a month ago, we had a summit meeting with the United States. And uh, if you look at the uh, joint statement made by both leaders of the both country, we have very strong uh, statement about the Indo-Pacific strategy. Uh, and also uh, regarding the, the regional peace and stability, including Taiwan and South China Sea. So I expect Korean uh, approach should be more, more uh, proactive down the road. I think Korea, uh, is going to be more uh, kind of um, active in this regard. I mean, we have huge stake in South China Sea, so I, I expect more activism uh, in, in this uh, area. Thank, thank you uh, very much. Um, any of the young professionals wanting to uh, add to what Professor Cho has already uh, said to answer uh, those four questions. Uh, yeah, Professor Jay, we actually have something to say. Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, uh, the first thing is on Myanmar, right? I mean, Myanmar definitely came up in our discussion, but you know, for some obvious reasons, we don't put it on our um, policy recommendation. But uh, but obviously, we talk about how to strengthen um, democracy, rule of law, uh, protecting human rights, uh, promoting human rights, and so on. Um, the second one, um, I can't help but, you know, to say something about the NSP versus the RCP slash BRI. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the question tries to frame as if like uh, RCP and BRI are uh, mutually reinforcing. I would like to, you know, um, emphasize that in my opinion, RCP and BRI, they're not mutually um, reinforcing. RCP in itself is a uh, trade pact is a trade agreement, while BRI is a form a, a form of foreign policy, right? So I think, um, you know, uh, comparing NSP to RCEP, they're not apple to apple, and and, and South Korea itself is part of uh, RCEP, right? So I think we we need to you know take take the question back to that point. Um, on on South China Sea, uh, we definitely talk about South China Sea and how. Uh, the you know the challenges arising from Ch South China Sea is a is an important uh, issue to tackle uh, by both South Korea and ASEAN, and the fact that you know a third of um, global shipping passes through uh, South China Sea, and how uh, South Korea also depends a lot on in imports and exports uh, through the uh, trade uh, route in, in the South China Sea. Um, so yeah, as as Professor Cho uh, as as um, Professor Cho mentioned. Um, you know, uh, we really welcome uh, South Korea's strong support on the as, uh, ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific. Um, and, you know, just uh, as, as, as uh, Michael Penny as well mentioned, uh, we need to explore more uh, regional venues that are ASEAN-centered so that uh, South Korea can uh, take part and play a, a, a more active role in, in uh, peace and security in the Asia-Pacific. I think I'll stop there, Professor Dewey. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other uh, additional comments from, from uh, young leaders? Eki or Amalia, do you want to add anything? Um, maybe I just would like to compliment what uh, Angelo, have, Angelo and Pat Choi have explained about the BRI, uh, NSP and RCEP. So we are talking about like two different, you know, concepts here. So the BRI and NSP, let's say we can put it into kind of like a foreign policy approach, but the RCEP itself is a uh, free trade agreement framework. So uh, if Indonesia, Korea has uh, ICASEPA in the regional level, we have this kind of like RCEP. And uh, I'm, not going to I'm not going to comment much about the BRI, but when we just talk about the technical details about BRI, BRI is focusing on this infrastructure ambition, uh, economic ambition, meanwhile, like Prof. Choi has mentioned that NSP is focusing on mutual economic benefits, and we do not only talk about economic, but we also talking about people, we also talking about peace, so I think that's where we can differentiate this to policy approach. I think that's all for me. Yeah. Okay, uh, Aki, do you need to add anything? Um, again, uh, if I may just add to the, uh, the difference between the BRI and the NSP, of course, it's a, it's a, it's a topic. Uh, aside from uh, that, the BRI is infrastructure-led, uh, is infrastructure-driven, and the NSP uh, is a more holistic approach. It is more compatible with ASEAN regional building that it has its own uh, 
uh, pillars that are compatible with ASEAN um, uh, pillars as well. Uh, I think one thing to note in the future implementation of NSP is um, the, the capability of the Republic of Korea and its institutions to ensure that the corporate cooperation projects are feasible to begin with, uh, that, which is one of the main reason why the BRI is very much criticized uh, by many people. And at the end of the day, uh, unfeasible projects led to uh, distrust in the BRI due to uh, countries not being able to uh, finish the projects. And even though when the projects are finished, uh, they would, for example, there, there have been sayings such as roads that lead to nowhere. Uh, and, 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 and such a Republic of Korea needs to ensure that the NSP projects implementation uh, up until its project's completion are feasible and uh, done in, uh, in, a, in a manner that are uh, consistent with safeguards uh, that international, internationally uh, you know, uh, aligned safeguards, such as they, they can take, for example, safeguards from the World Bank, uh, from the ADB and other uh, development partners. But at the core, uh, the NSP should be able to uh, make sure that the projects are well prepared, well feasible. So I think that's that. Thank you, Ibu. Thank you. Uh, the uh, Secretary has kindly uh, given us extra 15 minutes, so we will uh, close at uh, or four or 45. Um, Professor Childers, if you look at the chat uh, room, uh, there's a question uh, for you uh, from uh, Ruva, from the uh, uh, journalist from CNN. Uh, who points out that you've underlined the background of NSP, uh, among others, is to, to diversify the uh, you know, uh, South Korea's economic uh, relations so that it doesn't become overly dependent on one country like China here. And, uh, and, uh, and, and this note about the G7, you know, that's very critical of China, although we know that uh, three countries, uh, Japan, Germany, and Italy, uh, are less willing uh, to be, to be uh, as as harshly critical of China uh, as, as, as the others. But the question is, uh, will South Korea and other Southeast Asian countries be, uh, you know, be interested in forming a kind of a, a G7 uh, coalition uh, to, to, to ensure this uh, lessening of dependence on China? Uh, what would be your answer to that? Well, um... I, I think um, uh, the Koreans' perspective regarding uh, China and those of the ASEAN are very similar. I mean, uh, we have uh, um, um, ups and downs with, with China. Uh, well, uh, because President Moon uh, agreed uh, with uh, President Biden with many, many tenants of the Indo-Pacific strategy in the last uh, summit meeting, some Korean media outlets uh, reported that Korea moved a step further toward uh, United States and moved away from, from China and sort of chose uh, United States over China. But uh, that's not true. I mean, the, the basic approach of the Moon administration, at least Moon administration, is to try to strike balance constantly between United States and China. So you try to harmonize, you try to promote harmonious development of the Korea, Euro, uh, Korea US alliance with uh, uh, Korea China strategic partnership. So that's uh, a kind of very, that, that sounds very uh, conflicting. But I mean, at least uh, we try to kind of uh, manage a constructive relationship between China. Uh, but I mean, uh, regardless of your uh, political kind of approach uh, toward China, I think uh, uh, being too much dependent on China economically creates lots of problems. Uh, I mean, you need to have more diversified and you need to have more kind of uh, balanced 
trade relationship. Uh, for the last uh, 20 years or so, I mean, Korea has been swimming together with China economically. Uh, so when Chinese export to United States increase, Korean exports to China also increase. So we benefited from China, economic growth of China. But I mean, uh, the, the economic complementariness between Chinese and Korean economy is not anymore uh, true. So China is one of now one of the most uh, important competitor to, to in, in most industrial areas to Korea. So I think we need to develop a new kind of uh, kind of trade relations. And uh, in that regard, I think trade diversification is one way of Korean approach to cope with this sort of uh, kind of uh, uh, vulnerability. But of course, we, we also want to still uh, maintain a good uh, economic relationship with China. China still takes 27% of, of overall Korea's trade. So, uh, and also there are a lot of still potential for economic cooperation with China. But I think we need to uh, kind of uh, cope with some sort of uh, economic pressures coming from that kind of uh, asymmetrical um, uh, economic interdependence. So in that regard, I think there are a lot of rooms to cooperate uh, with ASEAN countries. Uh, I think uh, in that regard, basically we have the same feelings and uh, kind of uh, approach uh, regarding uh, China with uh, ASEAN partners. So, so in economic sense, I mean, uh, there are in bilateral ways as well as in, in multilateral ways, I think there are uh, more and more uh, potential to, to uh, expand and further cooperation uh, between Korea and uh, uh, ASEAN. So in that regard, I think the, the, the economic prospect of NSP is very bright. Thank you. Thank you. I'm afraid I, uh, the time is running out, so I, I will not be able uh, to entertain more questions, but I would just like to wrap up. Uh, firstly, that I think that uh, this uh, exercise, uh, this uh, Indonesia-Korea NSP, uh, young professionals lab. It's been a very exciting uh, initiative. And uh, from my perspective, at least there's been uh, three major uh, benefits for this. The first is actually, of course, the, 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 the output, the joint uh, policy recommendation, uh, which has been the, uh, the brainchild of this 10 young professionals uh, with the assistance of the uh, second, uh, FPCI secretariat. And, uh, and Clearly, uh, there is a great hope that this uh, policy recommendation uh, will be uh, useful for policymakers. Uh, ideally, uh, Professor Cho, because you are strategically placed as an advisor uh, to this NSP, that uh, you'll be able to make use uh, of this uh, product. And, and uh, maybe if you need further clarification, uh, you know, the FECI will be very willing to facilitate further communication uh, with, with the uh, young professionals. And secondly, you know, the benefit is actually, you know, to encourage these young professionals in Indonesia to take more interest in foreign policy in general and promoting Indonesia bilateral cooperation and ASEAN Co South Korea cooperation in particular. So you have ready made uh, uh, epistemic community, put it that way, who are vested in um, ensuring the, the, the uh, strengthening of the cooperation between South Korea and, and the ASEAN region, particularly uh, South Korea and Indonesia, and to strengthen the NSP. And last but not least, um, you know, this is widening of the foreign policy community of Indonesia. And I hope that the Stanya professionals will make lifelong friends uh, uh, through this uh, process. So uh, uh, I would like to thank all of the speakers. Uh, Dr. Dino Patijala, uh, for giving the opening remarks. Uh, uh, His Excellency, uh, um, Mr. Michael Tene and Professor Wongi uh, Cho uh, for your very important uh, addresses. And uh, to the three representatives of the young professionals here, uh, Eki, uh, Amelia, and Angelo, uh, for your hard work and for your excellent presentations. And thank you for all of the uh, uh, members of the audience, the media, and also the public 
uh, both through Zoom and, and uh, through the YouTube channels for your very insightful questions. And also, again, uh, for the, all the participants uh, for, for giving uh, very enlightening answers. Before I go, uh, Dino, do you have any burning uh, remarks? No, so um, I would like to uh, say thank you all uh, for your uh, enthusiastic participation. And congratulations again to the young people uh, for uh, this excellent recommendation. And now I would like to return the screen uh, to the uh, MC. Uh, Ria, the uh, screen is yours. Yes, thank you so much, Professor Dewi. And once again, I would like to thank our speakers, uh, Pa Michael, Professor Chue, and also the young professionals, Mbak Amalia, Mas Angelo, and Mas Eki. Uh, to close uh, our virtual forum for today, please do not forget to follow FPCI's events and connect with us by subscribing to our mailing list and also social media handles on Instagram and Twitter at FPC Indonesia. And we uh, hope today's virtual forum was fruitful for all the participants and we hope to see you in our next events. Thank you and have a good rest of your day. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. David. Thank you. Bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.